I give the floor to the International Service for Human Rights. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. It has been three years since the Council established the Commission of Inquiry on Burundi, and since then the government has used every possible means to prevent the Commission from accessing, accessing the country. This includes subjecting its members to threats and personal attacks, and threatening them with prosecution for defamation and attempted destabilization of the country. In the meantime, the government and its affiliated agencies and forces, including the police, the National <coughs> Intelligence Service, and the ruling party's youth, continue to commit gross widespread and systematic violations. ISHR remains concerned that the few defenders still in the country live and operate in constant fear in a restrictive and unsafe environment. We call on Burundi to uphold its obligation to protect fundamental freedoms, including freedom of association, assembly, and refrain from adopting laws that restrict the activities of civil society. In light of the 2020 elections approaching, the Burundian government should engage in an inclusive dialogue with civil society, political representatives, trade unions and all other stakeholders to create conditions conducive to holding free, democratic and transparent elections. ISATRI believes the scrutiny provided by the COI remains vitally important and calls for the renewal of its mandate. Keeping in mind the massive violations committed in 2015 elections, what mechanisms would the Commission of Inquiry put in place to monitor, investigate, report and push for accountability for human rights violations, including against defenders in the upcoming elections? Finally, ISHR urges the government of Burundi to reconsider its position and to fully cooperate in good faith with all of the United Nations mechanisms, including the COI. I thank you.